Hello, my lovely anatomists and physiologists. We left off talking about our synovial joint and the six types, and we're gonna jump right in to that conversation. So underneath our heading of diarthrosis, let's remind ourselves that you can have a uniaxial um, joint, meaning that you get movement in one plane. We can have a biaxial joint, meaning that we get movement in two planes. And we can also have a multi axial joint, meaning that we get movement in all three planes. And when we're talking about those planes, we're talking about the frontal plane, the sagittal plane, and the transverse plane. Okay, so let's go through all six types. We are listing them out from the least amount of movement to the most amount of movement. And we'll describe them and then give some examples in the body. So our pivot is our synovial joint, but it does have the least amount of movement. It's gonna be classified as uniaxial. This is defined as a bone that rotates within a ring formed from bone and ligament. Examples include C1, which remember has the name Atlas, and C2, which remember has the name Axis. So we're talking about the first and second vertebrae of the vertebral column. And we'll also see a pivot joint between the pro at the proximal radio ulnar joint. Proximal radio ulnar joint. So proximal means closest to the attachment points. So in the case of the arm, that's going to be forearm. That's going to be the elbow. So radio ulnar joint. We're talking about these two bones that are sitting side by side each other. The next one for us to look at is the hinge. Now hinge is also classified as uniaxial. In the case of the hinge, it's going to open and close in one direction. And this one is fairly easy for us to conceptualize. This is going to be your elbow. It's going to be your knee. <laughs> this is going to be your interphalangeal joints. So that's looking at interphalangeal. You have, remember, proximal, middle, and distal. And you can bend that finger. So you can, um, those are hinge joints. You can go one direction with them, and that's it. All right, moving on to the condyloid. We are going to start seeing more movement. In the condyloid, we have a biaxial joint. This is going to be having a shallow depression on one end of the bone connected to a rounded end of the other bone. So one bone has a depression, and the other bone that connects in has a rounded end. And we're going to see this in your metacarpophalangeal joints. Metacarpophalangeal. So that's your knuckle. That's your knuckle joint there. So not only can we do our flexion, not only can we bring our fists together, but then we can also spread. So two planes of movement. And we get that also in the radiocarpal joint. So radiocarpal, that's your radius, and your carpal bones, which are your wrist bones. OK. Move in next to the saddle. In the case of the saddle, we have another biaxial joint. So again, we're able to move in two planes. In the case of the saddle, it's named because both bones have a saddle shape um, to the ends. So they fit together like a rider on a saddle. Examples of this would be the first carpo metacarpal. Carpo metacarpal joint. So carpo metacarpal, right? So you're talking about your 
um, carpal bone of your wrist and then your metacarpal, first metacarpal here under the thumb, okay? And then in addition to the first carpo, metacarpal, we also have sternoclavicular, sternoclavicular. So this is gonna be a connection between the sternum and the clavicle. And then as we finish up our list, we are getting into those that have the most movement. So a plane joint is gonna be multi-axial. And in this case, you have flat or slightly curved surfaces and the bones will glide across. And so they can go in three planes. Now, depending on the surrounding tissue attachment, depending then on how tightly the ligaments and the tendons hold those bones together, you may be able to get movement in all three planes or you may not. You may be able to get movement in all three planes or you may not. Examples here are the intercarpals. Um, intercarpals, so that's between the bones of your wrist, the intertarsals, so that's between the bones of your ankle, and the acromioclavicular, and the acromioclavicular. So this would be between the clavicle and that acromion process of the scapula. And the last one, the most movable of our synovial joints is the ball and socket. And the ball and socket is um, going to be multi-axial. And this is literally, I don't even think an, an additional description is required. This is literally a ball fitting into a depression that we think of as a socket. And hopefully you studied enough of your skeleton to immediately think of your hip and your shoulder. So what we see is your hip and your shoulder do have the widest range of movements. They can move in all three planes. And because the socket in the shoulder is more shallow, the shoulder actually provides more range of motion than the hip. So while we get the most movement at the shoulder and the hip, we then have the weakest connection. And so what we see is the job of all the synovial structures is to add some strength and stability back to this joint while still allowing for movement. So stay tuned for a discussion of the synovial anatomy. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other.